What's up ladies and gentlemen, Wolfcryer here and welcome to another Diablo 3 build guide. This one's for the Sage's Wave of Light build for the Monk and this is what I currently use to farm my Death Breaths in Nephilim Rifts while I'm farming Keys and this build has been around for a little while. I first learned of this build from Marwan Gaming, all around great guy, great streamer. If you don't know who he is, check him out over at twitch.tv slash Marwan Gaming. Alright, so this is my hardcore variation of this build and let's just dive right into the build first up you're gonna be running the Sun Wukos monkey Kings guard build you're gonna wear five pieces and cube the royal ring of grandeur this is going to give you the six piece set bonus and for the two piece bonus you gain 50% damage reduction as long as sweeping wind is active and this is a great damage mitigator, especially in hardcore, when you're going to need that extra toughness, because in this build you are not running Unity, and you also need to keep your Sweeping Wind active at all times in order to be dealing any sort of damage whatsoever. And the 4-piece set bonus is pretty useless, but the 6-piece set bonus gives you 1,000% increased damage per stack of Sweeping Wind, and you are going to end up with 10 stacks, giving you a grand total of 10,000% increased damage to your Wave of Light, which is going to be your main damage dealing ability with this build. And you're pretty much just going to rip through white trash mobs and go right for the elites, and kill them, take the extra DBs, and move on. Now you're going to be wearing the pants, chest, amulet, shoulders, and either the gloves or the helm, depending on which is better between these and the pages set. Whichever one's better, that's what you're going to want to wear. And for the next set that you're going to be running, you are going to be running the Sage's Journey set. You are going to be wearing the boots and... Either, again, the helm or the gloves, whichever is better. And for the two-piece set bonus, this is going to give you 250 to each base stat, vitality, dex, strength, intelligence. This is going to be a helpful for a little bit of damage reduction as far as defense goes. And the dex is going to add to your damage as well. And for the three-piece set bonus, you are going to gain one extra death breath every time you kill an elite pack or a treasure goblin etc this is what's going to be giving you tons of dbs as you're farming now next up we're going to be wearing pinto's pride you can wear pinto's pride and cube nemesis or you can wear the nemesis bracers and cube pinto's pride whichever is better Pinto's Pride offers up to 150% increased damage to your Wave of Light, as well as adding a slow. And you definitely want to make sure these braces or the NEMS, whichever you are wearing, have 6% crit and 20% fire damage. Because we are going to be running the Fire Rune on our Wave of Light, so very very important piece of gear right here next up we've got the belt that we're going to be running and we are going to be running gold wrap gold wrap is going to give you armor based on the amount of gold you are picking up and you are going to be picking up a ton of gold the way we run this build so this is going to give you a massive damage reduction which next up for our first ring we are going to be running avarice band each time you pick up gold you increase your gold and health pickup radius by one yard for 10 seconds and this stacks up to 30 times this is going to let you grab those progression balls and just keep moving because it's going to suck all the gold all the progression balls right to you you can just grab your dbs move on to the next elite pack so that you can just keep farming away and spawn the, your boss and go ahead and kill him. Very, very quick rifts when you're using Avarice Band combined with Boon of the Hoarder, combined with Gold Wrap. This is pretty hard to die. And for the most part, you are going to gain a ton of gold and progress through the rifts very quickly. The other ring, we are running Obsidian Ring, which is going to give you reduced cooldown on both your Epiphany and your Mystic Ally. Mystic Ally is going to give you back your Spirit, which is going to help you greatly. So running Obsidian Ring really helps a lot because every cast of Wave of Light is going to trigger your Obsidian Ring. Now for your first weapon, you're going to be running Vengeful Wind, and you're going to definitely want a Vengeful Wind 
that gives you seven stacks of sweeping wind because this is what's going to get you to 10 stacks give you that 10,000 percent damage increase for your wave of light and you're pretty much going to slaughter everything from t13 down now you could choose to run t13s or t12 t11 whichever is faster for you safer for you you don't want to jump right into t13 unless you're sure that you can handle it especially on hardcore you don't want to be running around and die to a Nephilim Rift. You want to make sure that you can handle it. But I have no trouble farming T13 with this build. Definitely want an ancient weapon to move into T13 because this is going to slaughter everything. For the other weapon, I use Ingeom or Ingeom, however you say it. And this is going to shave 10 seconds off all my cooldowns every time I kill an Elite Pack. And since this build is built... To go from elite pack to elite pack, I'm consistently going to be able to dash around. I'm consistently going to be able to get my spare back with Mystic Ally and make sure that my Epiphany is up almost 100%, if not 100%, depending on how many elite packs you can chain together. So very useful to have this in any type of speed farming build for the monk. Now in the cube, we are going to be running Incense Torch, and this is going to give you... 550% increased damage to your wave of light as well as reduce the spirit cost and this is going to allow you to pretty much spam wave of light for the most part and you are going to deal a ton of damage. This combined with Vengeful Wind combined with your Sun Wuko set, this is going to give you all the power you need to just plow right through T13 rifts, grab a ton of DBs, get out, rinse and repeat. Then in the armor slot, we are running Nemesis Bracers. Like I said, you can run Nems here and wear Pintos or flip-flop those so that you have the most damage output that you can have. Nemesis Bracers is going to allow you to spawn another Elite Pack every time you click a Pylon or a Shrine, netting you with even more Death's Breaths. And over in the jewelry slot, we are running Royal Ring of Grandeur. This is what's going to give us the three-piece Sages set bonus and the six-piece Sun Wuko's Monkey King's Guard bonus. So we want to make sure we're wearing this so that we can get all this gear working together nice and smooth. Now for the gems, I'm using Bane of the Trapped, which is going to give me more damage to everything that is affected by a slow or a crowd control effect and since most of the time I'm going to be right up on the mobs and this gem once you get it to level 25 adds its own slow so you are constantly going to be dealing this added damage because with this build you don't run Sokrin's helm so you are going to be teleporting towards the mobs pretty much all the time it's actually an effort to stay away from the mobs because of the way epiphany works and your wave of light is technically a melee skill and without Sokrin's gaze whenever you have epiphany up you are going to teleport towards your target and cast your wave of light then i run bane of the powerful which is going to give me added damage to mobs for a set amount of time after killing an elite pack and it gives me 15 percent damage increase and damage reduction for elite packs so that's going to be very helpful as well and the last gem i run is boon of the hoarder which is going to give me a ton of gold all over the map because every time i kill stuff it's going to trigger that gold explosion from them increase my armor from my gold wrap and give me a nice little movement speed boost which is going to help me traverse the rift very very quickly now onto the skills i am using mystic ally air ally and this is going to give me some spirit regen i'm not running crudest boots but i still like running mystic ally just for that little bit of spirit regen because this can be very spirit intensive and you want to make sure that you have a way of getting that spirit back. Same for the next skill, which is going to be Sweeping Wind. You want this active at all times. And this is going to give you your spirit back because I'm using Inner Storm, which is going to give you some spirit regen. And like I said, you want to make sure Sweeping Wind is active at all times. You do not run Kayashiro's belt, so you want to make sure that you are watching that and making sure that it is active. If it does fall off, just quickly reapply it. This is going to give you your main source of damage and your main source of damage mitigation. So keep it active, ladies and gentlemen. 
And next up, I run Epiphany, Desert Shroud. This is going to give you a 50% damage reduction as well. And this is also, like I said, going to allow you to teleport to the mobs whenever you cast Wave of Light, whenever Epiphany is active, which should be very close to 100%, if not 100% of the time, because you are going to be killing Elite Packs at such a rapid rate. For the next skill, I use Dashing Strike, Way of the Falling Star. This is going to give you a nice speed boost after casting Dashing Strike, and you're going to be able to move a little bit quicker. Now, you could run Blinding Speed if you need more damage mitigation, but I personally like the increased movement speed. This is what allows me to just get through the rift very, very quickly and get to the next Elite Pack, grab my DBs, and rinse and repeat. And then we've got the bread and butter of the build. Wave of Light, Explosive Light. This is the fire-based skill, and you are pretty much just going to be casting this as much as you can, as long as there's mobs in the area. This, the casting of this skill is going to increase your stacks for your Wave of Light and keep it active because it counts as a melee skill. So you don't have to worry about keeping your sweeping wind active unless there's no mobs in the area to hit with wave of light. And last but not least, I use Mantra of Salvation Agility. This is going to give you a nice chunk of dodge chance and increase your resistances, which is very useful. You want to make sure you're not dying in hardcore. You want to make sure you're able to get through the Nephilim Rifts so that you can get that extra DBs so you can get all your mats, your keys and just keep farming so that you can move on to GRs and hopefully push those leaderboards if that's what you're into, or just increase your ability to progress further towards your own personal goals. Now for my passives, I use Harmony, 40% of your single elemental resistances from items instead increases your resistance to all elements. So you're definitely gonna be looking for secondary resistance on most of your gear, if not all of it. And this is going to increase your all resistance as well. So very, very useful passive to have. Next up, I use Resolve. Damage you deal reduces enemy damage by 20% for four seconds. I prefer this personally because I'm running hardcore, but you could run Beacon of Yitar for that 20% cooldown reduction or even Fleet Footed for the extra movement speed. That's all up to you. Because this is a guide, ladies and gentlemen. It's not written in stone. Should you think something is better for yourself personally, I would definitely test that out and go with it if it works better for you. Now for the, my third passive, I use Guardian's Path. While dual wielding, you gain 35% chance to dodge incoming attacks. I like this because it is yet another damage mitigation tool. And like I said, I don't want to be that guy that dies in T13 when I'm pushing 85s, 90s, 95s into the 100 GR area. I don't want to be that guy that dies in a T13 rift when I'm able to handle much higher GRs. This build is definitely better suited to making sure you stay alive. It does deal a little bit less damage than your normal wave of light build. So you want to keep that in mind and you want to balance out your damage and your damage mitigation. So that's why I use this here. But like I said, you can use other passives if you are able to. You're not worried about dying and that sort of stuff. And last but not least, and this one I would definitely say you need as a passive, and that is near-death experience. When you receive fatal damage, you instead restore 35% life and 35% spirit, and you are immune to damage and control-impairing effects for two seconds. This can go off once every 60 seconds. So this is pretty much your get-out-of-death-free card. Every time you're about to die, this should proc. And you definitely want to be careful if this does proc. You want to probably wait until this is over before you jump back in, especially if you are playing hardcore, because you want to make sure that your guy stays alive. That's probably got a good chunk of good gear on it since you're using it to speed farm for the most part. So you want to stay alive, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so last but not least, let's talk about some stats on your gear. First up, you're going to be wanting critical hit damage, 
and critical hit chance. Those two stats are very, very important to this build, as well as cooldown reduction. Now, you can throw in some area damage as well for the added area damage because that's going to be dealing a ton of damage since you are doing nefs, and usually they are well populated unless you get a really, really bad nef, which maybe you want to just start over anyways if it's one of those type of nefs with not a lot of elite packs, that sort of thing. So, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my Sage's Wave of Light Monk build. And hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully you can get a ton of DBs, get some crafting done, improve your gear, which is pretty much what I use it for. Trying to make sure that I craft some great weapons. Hopefully I can increase my damage and increase my isgr which is my ultimate goal is to move up on those leaderboards so that's why i use this whenever i'm key farming so that i can make sure that i can do some crafting with all those extra death breaths all right ladies and gentlemen thank you so very much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video i always greatly appreciate it and make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and don't forget to comment down below i love reading all your comments ladies and gentlemen all right, you all have a fantastic day. Peace.